Good morning, YouTube. What is good? Yo, I've been thinking about it. I might retire YouTube What Is Good. It kind of messes up the flow of how I want to start some of my videos, or it might be something I only say in certain episodes. I haven't decided yet. All right, so a few things before we get going today. One, yo, I'm still feeling a little bit sick right now. My throat is still sounding hoarse. Don't know what is going on, but this is something new I've been doing for the last week. It's not like an ad or anything because it is so disgusting, but I feel like I have a little bit more energy. I don't know. One, we get the super greens into the cup. Two, we get the organic beet powder in the cup. This is so disgusting. I can't even explain it. We blend it all together. You could probably shake it, but I'm so terrified of getting like a clump in there. I make sure I need to board it. And now for the sake of health, here we go. Ah! So I wanna show you all the new stickers that are available on evanramp.com. We got the yellow and red joints. This might be my favorite sticker yet, honestly, for sure gonna throw one on the laptop. So head over to evanramp.com, grab yourself one. Also, I'm giving y'all a sneak peek right now. I am so excited about this. This has been in the works for a while. The official Photography Lives Forever coffee mug. This is the one of one sample. I'm hyped about this. These hopefully will be available like late spring, early summer, probably mid April, early May. Is that spring or summer? I, I don't know. So a few weeks ago, we did street photography with my 24 millimeter lens. And today I wanna to try a different lens, an even bigger challenge. I wanna do street photography with my Nikon 85 millimeter F 1.4 G lens on my Nikon D810. It's for sure gonna be a challenge, but I'm excited to really switch up the perspective on my street photography and try something new today. is somewhere in this building right here. We gotta wait for him. What's up? What is that thing? Well, uh, little Cine rig. Follow focus. Real ridiculous. So before we get out to shoot today, we're out here with Chris House, right there in the house with his absolutely ridiculous, what is this thing? Uh, so it's a lens, lens follow focus. Follow focus. Lens, monitor. Side grip, grip cage. Cage, rail system. Grip. Yeah, so he's out here with his ridiculous camera helping me get a little bit of B-roll, some other clips. We're gonna shoot for a little while and then get out with the 85 to do some street photography. Good stuff, appreciate it. Oh, yo, it's getting kind of hot out here. Hoodie may have been a bad call. Speaking of this hoodie, I just wore this thing because it's been a while since I wore it. I thought it's cool. I've had so many people yell, go Ducks, shout out Ducks, Oregon Ducks. Even the guy playing the trumpet played like the Oregon Ducks fight song. I, I didn't know that's what it was. He's like, hey, listen to this. I kind of feel like a faker and a phony because I don't care about the Oregon Ducks. I just, I thought it was a cool hoodie very solid meetup slash hangout with Chris today. I wanted to get some drone shots of the city, but it's so busy out here and Chris is not FAA, is that what it is? FFA certified to fly a drone. Didn't want to break any laws and get arrested today, which would not have been good. If you've been following me for a long time, you know 85 millimeters does not get any love from me. It's a lens that I barely use, maybe once a month, maybe once every other month. I tend to favor the 70 to 200 for the things that I shoot and I neglect the 85, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring it out today. Try to 
use it for something different and show it a little bit of love. So there's gonna be some pros and some cons to using an 85 millimeter for street photography. One pro is the fact that it's a completely different perspective than traditional street photography. So when I'm looking through the viewfinder, the city is going to look a completely different way than it normally would when I'm shooting at 35 millimeter or even wider than that. So because my 85 millimeter is an F1.4, that means crazy depth of field, crazy bokeh, crazy subject isolation. And that is another pro to using 85 for street photography. It's something you don't necessarily see a lot. At 35 millimeter to get shallow depth of field, you really gotta be close to your subject where at 85, you can be a little farther away and still get a lot of bokeh and subject separation. So if you're someone like me and you don't like really getting in someone's personal space when you're making photos, this could be a positive. I don't exactly know yet because I haven't tried it, but in my head, I think it would be, especially for beginners, people getting interested in street photography who wanna make photos of people, but don't wanna get too close and disrupt them. I don't, I don't know, we'll see. Obvious disadvantages, one, it's not low key at all. The front element on that lens is huge. It's very obvious. It's a uh, very professional looking. So for street photos, you kind of want to be discreet and this is the opposite of that. Also street photography is street photography for a reason. It's about subjects interacting with the world, living real life, living the life that you see through your eyeballs. So 85 millimeter is not that. If you're a traditionalist, 85 is not going to get the job done. Let's go shoot now. So because I met up with Chris downtown, I figured this would be a good place to start today's shoot. Now, because the 85 millimeter is like that telephoto focal length, you can be very far away from your subject, but you also need to be farther away from your subject. So I move kind of out of the real bustling downtown area to try to give myself a little bit more space to make some interesting compositions. And I noticed this bridge off in the distance with the Bank of America building behind it. Notice how far away I am. You can barely see it on the GoPro but once you see the final image, it's pretty surprising. So this is the photo that I make. Notice how we have this person in the tunnel, we have the building, we have this compression, everything stacked on top of each other nicely. The composition is good because the person is isolated by those two buildings. The only issue with this photo is that there's not a ton going on because I made it during the middle of the day. I wanna go back here in the summer or in the spring when the trees have bloomed, maybe for a sunset, really get every layer of the photo to be interesting. This one is not the most interesting. That's why I switched it over to black and white. Wasn't a lot going on with the midday light. So no exaggeration in this video. I for real can't even remember the last time I brought an 85 millimeter out to shoot in the streets with me. It may have been two and a half, two years ago, maybe even three years ago. I do not use this lens a lot. I'm not being dramatic. Uh, right there, I noticed the fence with the FedEx truck. I thought maybe somebody would walk through it. Definitely nothing there. There's so many times off camera in this video where I bring the camera up to my eye expecting like a 35 millimeter focal length and realize, oh wait, we... This, this is a totally different ball game here. So I noticed these trees off on the left, they're blooming, they look really nice, they got this pinkish color to them, so I wanna try to incorporate them into some type of photo. Notice this light crossing into the street, there's people crossing, try to make a photo, it just wasn't working out composition-wise. So now I find this tree over here, and I'm trying to shoot through the tree, use some depth of field, there's some light coming through on this wall, casting a shadow. I spent way, way too much time here. I probably spent 30 minutes here waiting for something to happen, trying to find a composition that work, and in hindsight, kind of regret it. So this is one of the photos that I made. Eh, it's okay, we got the cool shadow on the wall, but there's just not enough going on in this composition. Notice all the negative space on the right side. You, you have no idea what you're looking at. It creates a lot of confusion. Made another photo, which there are some interesting minimalist properties to this image with the red car and the person walking through and the tree, but still we have a ton of negative space. So I walked up the street and I accidentally had my GoPro on uh, hyperlapse mode. So I didn't capture this as a behind the scenes, but I noticed this person wearing this awesome 76ers jacket, and this is a prime example of the depth of field that you can get with an 85 millimeter in the street. Background is very blurry, has a feel, a vibe to it. The only thing I wish, I just wish he was wearing a Hawks jacket. If I showed you this photo, you would think we were in downtown Philly or something like that. If this was an Atlanta Hawks jacket, a Braves jacket, something like that, this shot would be a home run. This is why I regret spending so much time at that tree composition. In this part of downtown, 
Chinatown, the colors, the lighting, everything was so on point, and I didn't realize it till we were towards the end of our shoot, towards the end of the time we had. But I noticed this newsstand across the street, set my camera up on this ledge right here, use my tripod clamp thing as a way to angle the lens at the proper distance. I'm going to drop my exposure here to one-tenth of a second, bring my aperture up to f9 so we can get some motion in our photo. I essentially want to show how busy the city is on this day, passing in front of this newsstand, which will be static. So essentially I'm just waiting for people and action to pass in front of my camera and this is what we make right here on point. This is the shot of the day. Love this photo. It looks great. So at this point, I probably have about 15, 10 minutes left. So I want to try to make some photos from a higher vantage point, switch up the perspective a little bit. Also, quick note, today I'm using a polarizer on my lens. I don't always do that, but because we're shooting in midday light, I thought it would be important and it definitely helped some of the images. So keep that in mind. If you have the option to use a polarizer, it's always great. So I take this sketchy parking deck elevator. I don't know why I ever use those things. Like, you're just basically asking to get stuck in an elevator. Anyways, though, head over here. I want to try to make some photos off to the left heading down this street. It's like, you know, a big valley at 85 millimeter. You'll get a lot of compression, but I couldn't really figure out a composition. It was a lot more challenging than I was anticipating. I'm way back here, as you can see, shooting through that hole in the fence to try to make something. And I don't know, it just, just wasn't coming together. This happened to me quite a few times off camera I'd bring the camera up to my eye and just couldn't couldn't figure it out. Definitely need some more time with the 85 to really, really figure it out. But all in all, I'd say today was a success. Got to head out now, get to do some other work. Definitely, uh, all in all, a fun day and a good day. We left with some good photos. So tonight I'm attempting to make cilantro lime chicken. Never made it before, had to get a few ingredients. I don't know if I'm gonna put it in the vlog. I probably won't, but I guess I'll update you at the end of the video if it uh, turns out any good. As for today's photo outing slash experiment, whatever you wanna call this, way more, and I mean way, way more difficult than I was anticipating. Basically, it was the exact opposite of what I was expecting. So remember how I said I thought 85 millimeter would be better for people like me who don't like invading other people's personal space when they're out shooting street photos? It's actually the complete opposite. You see, when you're in the streets, there's not much distance between one side of the street to the other. There's not a lot of distance in the city necessarily. And when you're shooting with the 85, you're right up on your subject because of the telephoto property. So I found myself when I was out shooting thinking, ah oh, man, I'm like, this is too close. There's too much emphasis put on this person. There's too much emphasis put on this person's appearance, which for me is something I think about with street photos. I know some people don't care about that, but for me, my photography, I don't want the way a person looks or their face or their appearance to be one of the central points of the photo. I want them to be part of the story without you knowing exactly who that person is. That's why I often silhouette people. That's why I often use motion. And the 85 made that much more of a challenge. So depending on what your photo style is, this might not be better like I thought it would be earlier in the video. But as for the images that I made, very impressed. It was fun. I think where this ends up, if you're watching this video thinking, can I use 85 millimeter? For sure you can. And if you're someone who's maybe bored with your street photos or bored with the way you've been shooting or the way things have been going for you, switching over to the 85 could be really beneficial and fun and interesting. I just wish that guy was wearing an Atlanta jacket. If you pair that photo of the guy in the 76ers jacket with the photo of the newsstand with all the motion, they look so good together. I actually posted that newsstand photo to my Instagram at Evan Ram, so make sure you head over there, zoom in on it, double tap it, all that good stuff. On the Instagram version, I actually removed the word Dixie from the photo and just had it say news in an off-center way. I thought it kind of made the motion in the bottom of the image stand out a little more. So let me know your thoughts. Do you like the original in the vlog or the Instagram version better? As for my final thoughts on 85 millimeter, yes, it's not traditional for street photography, but it's an interesting new perspective change that I think could bring you some creativity. It did for me, so I recommend it to you. Try it out. So if you enjoyed today's video, do me a solid 
solid. Hit that thumbs up button for me. Hit that subscribe button for more photography videos. And feel free to drop a comment down there. Let me know if there's any other photo challenges, any other things you wanna see me shoot, any other topics you wanna hear me talk about, just any other videos you might wanna see me make. Feel free to let me know down there. Y'all are the truth. Thank you so much for watching these videos. It really means the world to me. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and hopefully it inspired you to go out and try something new and make some photos for yourself because that's always my goal. So y'all have a great weekend and I will see you next time.